I am your host, Andrew Wilkow. Okay, so the House, with Democrat votes, passed ACR. You might be saying to yourself, well, Andrew, isn't that what Kevin McCarthy uh, got vacated for? Yes, but he had 10 months to prepare for this moment. What has Mike Johnson had? Basically 10 days? Here's Steve Scalise. Speaker Mike Johnson, he's got a, I'm going to call it a semi-clever plan, two steps continuing resolution. I don't, I don't want, I don't, it's semi-clever. Okay, my question to you, sir, is, is it going to pass and will, will we avoid a government shutdown? It's going to pass. And, and the biggest thing on this, Larry, is that it breaks this paradigm where we always get these Christmas Eve omnibus bills. I hate omnibus bills. Nobody reads them. They're dumped 3,000 pages the night before the vote. Uh, and it, it's got all kind of garbage in it. And those of us who vote against it, it doesn't matter because the bills pass. And it's got all kind of things you find out later about it. But we've got to stop this cycle. And so what the speaker did is negotiate pushing it into January. Let's have a fight over border security in January. And in the meantime, start working on more of these appropriations bills uh, that we have already passed through the House that control spending, that address some of the radical regulations that the Biden administration has imposed on the country that are crushing jobs, raising costs on families. So let's have that negotiation in the meantime. And then in January, we're going to have a fight over getting our border secure, which needs to happen. Yes, sir. I don't know what you're talking about. They passed something called the Inflation Reduction Act. Shouldn't inflation be back to a manageable 1.2, 1.4%? The truth is, is that high prices are here to stay, and this is going to affect family budgets and retirement. My first guest is the president of Walzer Wealth Management. She's also a tax attorney. Rebecca Walzer, how you doing? I'm great, Andrew. Glad to have, glad to be with you. Talk to me about how we survive this, because I don't care if you're middle class, upper middle class, so-called working class, lower income. Nobody seems to be escaping. The pricing that we're experiencing now, the currency uh, inflation, price inflation, unless you're a rich Democrat donor, what should people be doing to survive this? Yeah, you know, that is such a tough question because there's no tool that we can actually use to invest in other than commodities, precious metals, because I, I see us at the at kind of the crux of, you know, and, and think about it, Andrew, it's kind of like the implosion of Rome upon itself. You know, Bloomberg did an analysis at the end of last month, and they found that annualized interest on our debt is now going to surpass a trillion dollars a year. Now, that analysis has doubled in the last 19 months. We are at coronavirus level pandemic spending on interest. And what this means is, even if we have these temporary gains in CPI like we had this week where we saw that basically month over month it was flat and that we actually had some declination annualized. Even when we have that good news, Andrew, it's still, you know, almost 4% or is 4% a year, and people aren't getting that kind of uh, increases on an annual basis to keep up with this. So what has got to happen? We just had Moody's turn negative on the U.S. you know, debt, and we obviously had Fitch downgrade U.S. bonds earlier this year. So we have the ratings agencies clearly forecasting to Congress that the budgeting process is broken, that these uh, debt limits, that this one was unconstitutionally, in my uh, legal opinion, uh, extended through the election through 2024. So now we have no debt limit, essentially. And you have to have these continuing resolutions, even though we have no debt limit. P American people don't understand. Just because there's no debt limit, that doesn't mean that the spending has been authorized. So they, what they do is they do this intentionally. And that interview with Larry Kudlow is exactly right. They put it back up to Christmas so that they can pass these massive bills that no one reads. The American people are distracted with the holidays. And we are totally broken on our process. And the ratings agencies have clearly stated this. So the American people need to understand, unfortunately, and I'm going to be really blunt here, the social contract with the federal government and the taxpayers is absolutely broken. And we have to come back to the table and say, what are you going to do? Buy bicameral party it's just across party lines this is not red this is not blue this is a usa problem and we are going to have to fix this because we uh, might get to a point Andrew, where we go no bid on our treasury options if we don't get this fixed all right talk to me real quick we're going to run out of time here talk to me about people who are approaching retirement age and people who are on fixed income who just are just getting gutted here what should people who are approaching 
10 years out from retirement be looking to do to protect themselves? This is a great question, and I can't answer the inflation question with investments because that's a problem. But what I can say is we have been sold this bill of goods of building wealth up pre-tax, Andrew. You know that the 401k, the IRA, is the biggest retirement vehicle since 1981 in the United States. We've been promised that don't pay your taxes now while you're in your high-earning years. Wait till you retire in your low-earning years, and then you'll pay a lower tax. The government analysis in 2008 shows that if we pay all the benefits that have been promised in Social Security and Medicare, that the middle class tax rate will be in the 60s. So what people need to do if they're 10 years out of retirement is start realizing that pre-tax wealth accounts are going to be the place the government goes to get wealth and through taxation. And I would get control of your money by systematically over a series of years, basically getting that money out of pre-tax and into an after-tax vehicle, such as the Roth, which will be tax-free forever once you pay the tax on the principal. What about people who are getting just killed that are on a fixed income? They can't go back and earn money. Their income is fixed, but everything they buy costs more. Yeah, I mean... This is why we have to have the American people come together and understand that we have to go back to petition our government to say, enough is enough, let's fix this. This is a fundamental problem of our society, Andrew, and those people are the most affected. So this needs to be a, you know, a nationwide situation that we take to Congress to fix. This is a problem with the social contract. It's broken. That's a dark and scary picture. I know. <laughs> Re I'm Rebecca. sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm just being honest. I mean, like, I'm, t I'm giving you the, the input here. It's the implosion of Rome. You, There was always going to be an end. There was always going to be that limit that we cannot stimulate beyond, we cannot print beyond, and we are getting there. Whether it's six months, three months, tomorrow, or 18 months, I'm telling you, we are at the end. And when you look at the BRICS nations, Andrew, and I know that you're a big, you know, you love economics like I do, when you see Saudi Arabia and the UAE joining bricks in January of 2024, I think it's the end of the petrodollar. And that is a whole nother issue because now the nations of the world don't have to buy U.S. dollars at our auctions to buy uh, petroleum from OPEC and OPEC Plus. So we have got a lot of things coming at the American public and we have to wake up and just, this is what I can't stand, Andrew. Everyone always says to me when I bring these topics up, oh, the dollars, there's no threat to the dollar. And I'm like, really? Look at the Forex reserves held in dollars. And you tell me there's no threat to dollar hegemony. You're wrong. It's here. Cut taxes, cut spending, increase energy output. Got it.